Um, I just wanted to do a festival. This is around like more social justice issues or things we don't think about a lot and also really um, a focus sort of one day or it's spread out with all the other events around it. Um, one day focus on a certain topic and the first one was more on the brown body which would now be the BIPOC body mm -hmm. and then the last few years on last two years that has changed a lot the awareness and and you know through being in a pandemic um different kind of stories um and then the other one was around the aging body on screen and uh, that was super important and also really opened my eyes to a lot of things also myself and I started this festival already knowing the first four, four topics I wanted to do. <laughs> so it's, I, I wanted to do it around a brown body, around the aging body, around bodies with disabilities and something with the environment probably for the next one, but not sure sort of environmental justice, but not sure how that's going to actually show up in, mm -hmm. in dance film. So that that's going to be a bit of a puzzle still, but I have some time for that one. Um, yeah, and then so those are always things that I thought was they're they're sort of re represented sometimes in screen dance festivals, but maybe one or two, and I just wanted something really focused and and really showing or bringing awareness more, bringing awareness by the way curating that there are other in this case other bodies dancing, right? Not and you will understand it because you come from the ballet world, which you have to have a certain look and a certain body type, often white, often super skinny, the, you know, it's very codified, mm -hmm. um, changing a little bit, but not that much. Right. And I yeah, think not that, that much, <laughs> not that much. It's no. still so slow. <laughs> yeah. It's still really conventional in the way in, in, in what it means to be a dancing person, dancing body. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the kind of heart, just like judgment. And then in society, I think it's also really re what people think about of what good dance is and you know, all of that. And so I wanted to break that idea a little bit because everybody dances in a way and it could be a really powerful film documentary otherwise to, to do this. Um, so yeah, and with disabilities, I think there are the the dance dancers with disability have been advocating for a few years, I would say now, and it, I think also that the disability community at large has been really vocal for fighting for, let's say, an elevator, which you know New York City is still pretty limited, and that's all has to do with physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. But I just felt that with looking at dance specifically and then screen dance um like who is dancing and who makes dances and who has access and who are we showing on screen and what will those stories or just having a collection of people still dancing in all kind of ways what does that do to you when you see that or how can it maybe make you look at dance and dance film specifically then how can you look at that and how can you create bigger awareness and more visibility for for dance so that was kind of just the whole idea and um yeah and then we did an open call and we got quite a lot of films and we selected films from that um some are installation films that we, that i thought oh they might not work well in a program some will go only online and then some will be shown in the theater which is only like four short films mm -hmm. two programs of shorts that both have four films and they're not even an hour together because i also kind of like to keep it like short and you can think about it take a breather see another four and then for the first time now we have a feature in it because there's a dancer in it and it's around visual disability oh. and we have three films this film is a documentary, a feature film um, by uh, Rodney Evans, who is a filmmaker who became, you know, slowly is going blind. And so as a visual impaired filmmaker, he made a documentary about visually impaired 
artist and one mm. of them is a dancer and um so that is not that much dance in it might a dance but it's beautifully done and i thought that the discussion was really important because we also have a film that's an older film also that was an invited film by katherine mcpearson and it's contact improvisation with visually impaired and blind dancers in the uk um, and so they're talking about their prompts what they're doing so if you just look at it you see just a whole bunch of bodies doing contact but um yeah, that, that's an interesting one. And then there is an sort of installation piece um, that also deals with visually impairment. So that's the two and then combined with this film, I thought, okay, I actually didn't know that much about visually impaired, right? Because there's a lot of when we talk, at least speaking for myself, disability is more something that we can see. Like, as you know, right? If you have something you have, it's like something if you're, if you're deaf, we're a little bit more aware of deaf and it's a lot more sign language. Mm -hmm. I honestly did not think that much about, I mean, I'm, I must admit about the visually impaired and blind people also giving access to film and wanting to see the film. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that we're dealing with is some of the films that we didn't actually didn't come with audio description. So I'm waiting for the audio description. We had to hire somebody, got some funding so we could do audio description. Uh, I have a friend who does that for um, for Broadway shows, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. we need context now because I need to know it for everything. And I'm also realizing that my own films don't have it and that there is a real need. And even my recent film that to have an audio description of the film and it's a dance film, right? And yeah. I didn't ever think about that mm -hmm. so that needs to be a whole new budget item line and we kind of started with that later because we did ask the submissions to have it accessible but only some of the newer ones have so we're still scrambling to make everything accessible yeah i might not make it with all the films so mm -hmm. like i might is have the, to... are those descriptions sorry i'm interrupting you um is a lot of that based on laban movement analysis when you're sort of describing what's happening we were just talking about the visual, the audio description, and you asked me if um, it was based on Laban, and I said, I had no idea. Um, it's really my first time even working with it, and there's not that many people doing it mm -hmm. for film and dance film. Mm -hmm. um, and and also, I learned that it's also only recently that they sort of do it in the law. So if you go to bigger films, let's say Spider-Man, you can go to the box office and ask for a headset that gives you um, access to the audio description. I never knew that. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. And that, um, that I learned from the filmmaker who is doing this, um, the talk back. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's definitely a thing and it is definitely something that um, I'm learning. So every time you do these festivals, you learn something about it. Um, I, I think I'm more familiar with maybe deaf or physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, not as much, I, yeah. I have to admit. So that's kind of the big learning curve. And so I'm excited that, to show that it's a beautiful documentary and to have a talk with... Um, uh, with Rodney Evans and Kayla Hamilton, who's in the film, and they're gonna just really talk about um, creating art with uh, visual disability. Mm -hmm. I think that's so interesting. It's um, that's actually something that I've been thinking a lot about recently myself, just because um, with my disability, I have um, so the diabetes has given me a lot of nerve damage in my feet and my legs. So some days my balance is really off and I need a cane and I feel like I'm treated so differently when I have that, you know, like a, a visual, a clear visual symbol um, of a, a disability as opposed to when it's sort of invisible. Um, and I think it's it's like a strange thing of like what what you choose to show of yourself you know what i mean um because i know for me as a dancer uh you always want to sort of like look perfect and like look capable of anything and and that kind of thing um and it's um 
it has really like changed. I feel like my perspective on on things like competition, things on showmanship, things on what has value in being seen. Um, because I think in the dance world, we put so much emphasis, or at least in sort of like the quote unquote classical dance world, so much emphasis on um, just like the visual perspective, you know, um, being stunning and dazzling and your capabilities and all that kind of thing. Um, and it has been really interesting to me to, for me, because the, then there are so many days where, you know, like I'll go to a class or even in like directing my own company where I constantly have these doubts and these questions, like, do I still really have a place in this world because I can't do all of those things anymore? But I think for me still deciding that like, this is what I'm really passionate about and wanting to show up. Um, I feel like I'm not capable of telling these sort of like physically dazzling stories anymore because like, I can't go on relevé, you know, like my feet don't point anymore. Um, but there's something to me about putting, I don't know, like showing up in the face of obstacles and maybe putting like bravery on stage that to me still feels like it's worth something. Um, and I don't know if that's just my selfish, like I still just want to be on stage, but. Um, yeah, nothing, you know, I, I, I don't think there's anything selfish about it. It's also inspirational and it like makes you deeply think about dance and what dance is um like if you look at alice's company we have a documentary about her work they do aerial work in wheelchairs and mm -hmm. the wheelchair is an extension of the body yeah um and it's innovative and it's beautiful and it, it just allows you know it just requires you to let go of your idea of what dance is of what aesthetic of what good dance is mm -hmm. right um and i think that's important and there's a quite beautiful film I'm showing. I really fought to get it. I'm paying for it too. Is uh, with Homer Avila, who uh, is a dancer who, um, you know, had his leg amputated and he has one leg. And it's uh, Alonso King they did a beautiful solo on him and on that process. And just seeing him, um, you know, continue to dance in spite of, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that the spirit of dance and dance itself and what you can express with dance is also a humanity and not necessarily um, virtuos virtuosity or, um, and especially after the competition dance and everything else and to a large extent in dance, a lot of contemporary dance, right? So who, who gets to dance mm -hmm. is really what it is about. Um, and of course, in the case with visual disabilities, I think it's often uncomfortable for people to see other bodies that happens with aging bodies too, right? It is mm -hmm. just like trying to stay young looking and tight looking. There's so much judgment and the sort of just in our society um, and less regard for, for aging or heavier set bodies or any of it, right? This gets really selective and difficult for the majority of people because well, almost nobody fits that stereotype and everybody can dance basically. Yeah. 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 I wanna... think it's so interesting um, that this is all being done in a film festival, especially, um, I don't know about you, but I, I feel like representation so often that I see of dance through like digital medium. I mean, just with, focus levels of people in society these days you know we look at our screen and so quickly just want to like move on to the next thing so i feel like that's one reason why i mean you know like the dance that you see on instagram is all just like those people with these bored faces and their legs like way up here and like <laughs> i don't know like um i think it's really interesting that you're exploring it through like a film medium was there ever any any idea of doing that as like a live event instead or why did you choose film well i'm a filmmaker one and so i make this particular form of film which is screen dance now called the forest dance of film film camera which is really a hybrid form it's still not as niche anymore but it really started as an experimental form between film and dance, but an experimental form. That's really important to note. And um, 
So I've been making films myself for a while and this genre is not just um, filming dance, right? Which what we see um, on TikTok or internet, it's just, it's just like, this is my dance and look what I can do. And it's not made as a film. A lot of these dances are either a documentary or they're made as a dance film, meaning it's thought about camera, how it represents, and it's itself an other medium. It's not just we are doing the dance that we do on stage and we put a camera on it and we're showing it to you. It's made mm -hmm. as a film. Mm -hmm. It's a film. So the film has dance in it mm -hmm. and it's made in that way. I mean, that's also one of the ways we look at it. And then with some more like documentary type films in there but it's definitely made as 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 that so for me i never so it's it's a dance on camera film so i never considered doing a live festival okay <laughs> yeah. um and with i mean with the submissions that you're getting are those mostly from companies that have a similar approach like their work is usually exists in the digital realm or are these companies that then are usually doing more like live performance and then are experimenting with trying to make films well, no, actually, it's mostly filmmakers. Like, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a choreographer too, but it's mostly filmmakers who make dance films or maybe filmmakers that work with a company or dancers that are, as a project, like, hey, you're doing something, I want to make a dance film with you. So it would be choreography created for the camera. It's not okay. register. It's very important to know it's not registration of a dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. So screen dance is really choreography made for the camera and really as its own vehicle as its own form that's just mm -hmm. like there's now even things like uh, there are books like screen dance studies like it's a thing right it's and it's and and it gets a little complicated the last two years especially during pandemic because everybody's just like filming dance filming dance and that doesn't necessarily make it a screen dance nope you know? not at all it's yeah. been so interesting because um i mean yeah that has been the huge conversation with like how do we shift things more into the digital realm with so many of the companies that that i'm working for i mean even like you know i teach for new york city ballet and american ballet theater and the the, the struggle of trying to approach um creating things that will exist through the medium of like film tv and seeing things through the phones like um we need somebody like you honestly because we're all like i don't know this is totally a totally separate art form and yeah you know. well it is an app separate up there's two effort forms. it's an app separate art form to make something specifically for screen and letting go of what you would do on stage and then there is which is i just the my other zoom before is in this festival in amsterdam cine dance and so they're showing my films and they also asked me today to be part of the jury for the films that they already selected and they have a new category this year is like a prize for the best filmed live performance interesting okay and i've never been in that and i was like oh that's interesting so yeah. there is a shift to to acknowledging that there is an art to really film a live performance in a way that it's not just a camera and you're showing what's on screen which is yeah. not surprising uh, and and then there is the normal short dance films which are made for camera they are their own thing it's not it's not it's not something that is just a dance taken and filmed mm -hmm. um but it's reworked it's also not mostly most of the time not reworked it's completely its own thing made for as a film right right um but they have that category so that's that should be interesting because there's you know, people, because they've had to cancel so many performances, have been really thinking about it and partnering with filmmakers. Yeah. Of course, dancers think they know in the beginning everything and they just think, oh, we're going to film it ourselves and do it ourselves. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, filmmaking as a collaborative art might think about working with a filmmaker. That yeah. I feel like so many dancers, like, I mean, we think we know our good angles, but other than that, we didn't know. <laughs> No. Well, well, dance from the front is really also not good. So the more you can do whole other things with camera that you can't do on stage, right? So yeah. You can, you can choose the close up and this and what does that say? And, you know, all of those like real film things that mm -hmm. you need to make it a film and not yeah. a registration. So I'm really curious to see it. I did say yes. I was like, I'm so busy, but it's after I finished teaching. So it's like, okay. Yeah. You're like, well, oh, it's an interesting. You make yeah, it will be interesting for me just to like see. They already selected it. So it's not like I have to select the best. They selected all the best already. And then, yeah. it, um, and then it's just with a jury selecting uh, like 
the best of the ones that they selected basically okay yeah so can i ask with um with the films that you choose for this festival are they all within the context of like discussing disability or can they be about anything and it the it just has to be the the dancers having some sort of a disability I'm yeah, this is a good question yeah so it's not you know we just had also this discussion about like that doesn't mean it is about the disability at all mm -hmm. it just is also some are like the documentary um but there are also films like the work of uh, pioneer winter is gimpgate is a disabled dancer partnering with an able body dancer and it's a duet and it's not necessarily about the disability it's a duet about strength and support mm -hmm. um, however you do see a disabled person who can't walk and a person you know like and, and that so it's not like you're not aware of it but it's not necessarily um this is about disability mm -hmm. and there is another one of a dancer a wheelchair user dancing um, access dance company has actually worked at flutter that is recreated for screen but it's a dance with a dancer and two wheelchair. That's like in a trailer. I don't know if you saw our trailer. Mm, I don't think I saw the trailer yet. Actually. Yeah, because in the in the I think in Camila's press release there is a link to the trailer. Okay. So if you look at that, then you can get like an idea of just like glimpses of the sort of like wheel dancing that's mm -hmm. happening. Um, yeah. So it's a variety, and some there is one that's done made by during Zoom, but it's really sweet. Um, made by and danced by um, all dancers with um, Down syndrome. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, it's really quite cute. I mean, the quality is not as great, but they did everything themselves. It's just really a great little, um, yeah, a great little film. Mm -hmm. and then some are just like more mixed ability dance companies that do work together yeah yeah wow and then you can't put everything in either right and then there's of the the one sense eight which by Kat katrina mcpherson um yeah if you don't really know it's you just see a lot of dance a lot of bodies flying around the space and you're like why but then it's interesting to know that they're why they're talking they're sort of talking through what they're doing the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so that's this, their own life score, and that kind of um, then you understand what they're doing and why they're doing because they can't see. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like the, it, there's going to be um, a lot of diverse kind of stories and approaches towards towards movement and towards creation. Do you feel like that's true in this year in particular or in years past, like? Um, just the, yeah, the different sort of like approaches and like the, the reasons why people are continuing to try and, you know, showcase themselves as, as dance artists and things like that, despite any sort of like physical challenge or mental challenge. Well, I think it's like people, right? So the diversity of stories, like the different, different stories. So whether it's people living with disabilities or whether it's people are aging or, or all kinds of indigenous black and brown, it's not the same story. It's, but it's just realizing that there are different or different stories anywhere with people like any dance festival would do different depending on what people choose so it's in that sense it's kind of it's not different of course there are different stories and when we do look at like quality um and also the jury that selects is also a representative so it's not only able-bodied people judging uh, films for people with disabilities it's it's it's, yeah. a, it's a mixed group who also mm -hmm. judges and and that does sway us because there's definitely one or two films that i was like man i'm gonna say no this is really good and it's really important and this is why and yeah. then got included um primarily because i was like i don't know they said no it's really you know and so that, that that's important in our mm -hmm. thinking so the jury selection is also people that represent the theme or is at least inclusive and um yeah, it's, it's equal. And then the other part, so it's not like the first one is it was like BIPOC bodies and it's all, let's say, white bodies. It was a very diverse audience. And then the next festival was around aging and then we only saw the 
all of a sudden have only black body or white bodies. It's just, again, keeping inclusivity of different ages, of different everything, both in every jury selection and in the films. That makes it hard. I have to tell you, it gets a slim picking. And then another part is that it's really important that for the films that we select, some films were pretty good, but they didn't get through because it was a film about people with disabilities by all able-bodied and they were speaking for them and not them speaking for themselves and so mm. part of it is that they either have they have to have agency in the film so if they're in it then they're part of the choreography or somebody is an, a person with disability who is directing or is editing or is you know so the ownership is really important and so 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 it's not just like showing the other it is like an active are, participation it's in people it people's story mm, okay yeah it's important it's like it's like oh it's like if somebody is going to make a film about diabetes how those people experience it without your input your thing in there your writing that's the same right <laughs> oh my gosh i mean uh i go to a lot of comedy shows and i I always just want to give myself like a dollar for every single like, oh, now you have diabetes, like joke that you hear that is just completely misunderstanding like how it works. But some of these things right. I guess you have to have a sense of humor about, but um, yeah. not everybody okay. understands each other's experience. But I think that's one reason why like what you're doing with the festival is really powerful. Um, do you have sort of like a desired impact or when you think about like who's going to come and see these shows like is the is the de desire in creating it more to give an opportunity for people with different bodies and that kind of thing um maybe outside the lens of like quote unquote normal dance is it more about creating an opportunity for them or is it more about educating people that then see the work or both <laughs> yeah maybe neither <laughs> neither um <laughs> Yeah, because it's kind of, I'm, I've never been really dogmatic, even in my own art. Like I really foreground people of color, right? Because I need to see a reflection of more of my world so that I want to contribute to more diversity mm -hmm. on screen, but not by preaching about it or, yeah, like saying, yeah, this, this is what you need to think. I think that if you put a selection of films down that it can have, it can be powerful people with disabilities who might not have thought about, oh, I can still dance. Oh, I'm in the wheelchair, but I can be a dancer. It could be impactful for them if they have not seen it or anything like that. It could just create sort of an understanding of seeing yourself represented. So maybe that um for others it's not so much educating i like to think about maybe showing work that's not people and films that are not generally visible so creating more of um more visibility mm -hmm. right so it's really to make some to make visible and then people can do with it what they want and then also you know it's it's I'm, I'm not making Spider-Man, right? Or a big festival, so it's not popular culture by any means. And I'm not delusional and thinking that that's going to have an impact. It's a small festival, but I always think that if, you know, like with dance, if it can maybe help change some people's minds or maybe open people's perspective a little bit. And then they can pass it on in their community or that will be good. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's also, um, you never know what people get away with, but it definitely is to give, to give visibility and then hopefully open people's eyes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it opens my eyes, as I said, with the whole, whole thinking about audio description. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Do you, yeah. has that been true in other years where, um, where you feel like you've kind of been surprised by, I don't know, if it's just sort of like a new topic comes up or like a, not a trend, trend is the wrong word, but um, just sort of a, an issue within the community of, of dance or of disabilities in dance where something has been surprising even to you. Has that happened in other years? Yeah, I think I would say around, not the first year, but all the 
um, you know, was a super diverse in like some were political, some were not, some were just mm-hmm. like, you know, Indonesian dances or something like mm-hmm. that. It was just really broad. Um, what happened with the aging is more in the process with the jury again, and this was the jury again, wh- where I learned most um, when we selected films, because we had two people that were 70 and 80 plus, dancers still super active, and there was one film that I really liked, and it was really this older woman sitting and this young, this other dancer dancing, but I just beautifully filmed, and they were like, absolutely not, and I was like, oh, because it show it sort of reinforces the stereotype of an older person just sitting down. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. And not having agency. So I learned and I was like, oh yeah, you need to show the power and the humanity and the resilience and they're still full human beings mm-hmm. when people are older and they're not just sitting in a chair and then the other person only dances, right? Mm-hmm. And that was interesting because I didn't pick that up the very first time. And then it ch- forever changed my mind and how I look or how I make films or how I, um, you know, ageism, ageism, more than ableism, more than anything, more than racism is one of the most pervasive um things in society i mean the kind of things that people say about older people is ridiculous the kind of invisibility is just like beyond the pale and the lack of awareness around ageism is huge Mm -hmm. and also sort of the separatism it's like lately there was came this film out it was just like ridiculous i was like how can this still be made in 2021 that was last year Um, And people like it. And it's just like stereotype of the stereotype. And in every field, it would not be accepted. But then if it goes about ageism, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that one has had the most, was sort of some of that process of selecting the films with people who were 70 and up was super important. Mm -hmm. You mean having them on the panel? Or yes, having... having them on the jury selection, having mm-hmm. them select the films with me. So I don't select all the films. I have films that are um, that I've invited and that I start the festival mostly with already one or two or three films that I want to show. Yeah. Because I'm always looking, like if I know what the subject is going to be. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's so funny that ageism is such a an issue and a problem because that's something that everyone is going, I mean, it's a universal thing. You know what I'm saying? Like disability is like, I guess you can sort of give an excuse of like, oh, well, that's not everyone's experience, but everybody is going to get older. (laughs) I don't know if it's just like a, a universal fear or something that that's one reason why we really shy away from it. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm getting some. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> some some like um, festival related questions going in, and I just looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that that's an interesting one. And well, I mean, I think with disability is like we've we've put people away, right? When they had disabilities, so mm-hmm. they were not made visible. Like your people were either scared of them or they put them away, or you don't want to look at them. So it's part of it is that we we were a little bit conditioned or some some society still or some part of society not to look at people with disabilities. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's the disability community advocating for themselves that is really changing. And they're really powerful in that, I think. Yeah. Do you find that most of the, um, like the attitude towards creating art and those kinds of things, is that similar for most of the films that you, choose because I I feel like for me um, whenever I am talking about myself as sort of like a disabled artist I feel like I always have to have such a positive spin on it you know when I'm like oh but I've learned so much about myself and that kind of thing and some days I really just want to say like it stinks and I'm really angry (laughs) like well you know it's interesting there is a great article that I read and I also see it was in the New York Times it's called about inspiration porn yeah <laughs> uh, yeah and so these are not inspiration porn films it's just people still doing and it could be inspi- inspiring for people or other not but so it's trying to stay away from that too right it's like the overcoming the obstacle and then still having this fantastic life yep um 
Yeah, that that's also like we're not looking for that, right? But that is definitely a thing, and that's also you can see that in the um, the Olympics. It wasn't related to the Olympics, right? When you have people like, oh, look how they still can do ah, you mm -hmm. know, like so. That's not the idea. And then you we feel so inspired by them because then if they can do it then what you know like there is that and then yeah in that disability community there's a real pushback and a talk about inspiration porn and i thought that was a very interesting and uh perspective too it definitely helped me think about the films we select though you know it's like really like I still really look at it in on its own terms and yeah and, but that depends on who makes it because if people that have disability make it themselves it's very different that so when you start start changing and really looking okay we're not going to have an outside view of people but people really have to have agency in the film that we're presenting then mm -hmm. you get other kinds of films yeah yeah so then you don't have that but you know as a person with a disability or anything else it's good i mean and i'm older right and so i get oh my god or it's like people like oh but you know how old i am like oh my god you, <laughs> you know you look great and you still yeah do this. and then i'm like you know, that's actually an insult in a way, right? It's not really kind of an compliment because I know. Makes you assume that if you're past 40, that you look horrible and you are not curious and you're not making new innovative art. Yep. Right. And it's like that you can't move because you can't do a relevé. Like, I mean, it, it, there are so many like well-meaning discrimination in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's Mike said we really really hard because they're in that is already the othering of this like large stereotype yes right definitely. um so yeah I, I mean i think deeply about all that stuff and and get more and more you do this festival and, and you think about these things it's just really interesting and then you become really aware of everything <laughs> so that's also good and fun and also annoying sometimes, sometimes. yeah yeah, well, you don't you have can't wrinkles. Turn it off. Oh my God, you don't have wrinkles or, you know, like anything. I'm like, you know, what do you know about this? Right, exactly. And, um, and and that's in society, I think, by just separating people off in the last year. So it's like, okay, you separate the younger from the older, the able-bodied from the disabled bodies. Um, there, There is sort of like that separation going on and in the media specifically, mm -hmm just very much what we are fed like on tv and in in media like we see a certain thing like everything is made for this sort of demographic that you and i know who we're talking about without having to explain it right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah anyway we can go on <laughs> we could go on i i love what you were saying about um just having to have people on the panel that represent, you know, whatever the, if you're talking about ageism, like needing to have older people on the panel to help select and also like the agency within the work itself. Um, I feel like that has been something that I've noticed that I often take issue with whenever they're sort of like, you know, a disability inclusion artwork type of things, especially in the dance world, because I feel like so, so many times, and this was my fear in like wanting to start my own company and continue making work. Um, when I had kind of lost like the traditional movement vocabulary, kind of having to think like, okay, well, how am I gonna make, um, take a creative new approach towards it to still make excellent art? Because I feel like so often within, um, you know, when we're doing these like pushes towards inclusion, it ends up being a tokenization without actually improving the art. Like I went to a show last uh, two years ago or something where the company was just patting themselves on the back like you would not believe because they had a bunch of able-bodied dancers like rolling one person in a wheelchair around who was just like waving a rose in the air. And it was just embarrassing. I mean, it was just like, you're not making the art any better that way. And then I, on that same program, um, there was a company called Momentum Dance Project. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, I think they're based in Minnesota actually. Um, but it's almost all wheelchair bound dancers, but the way that they were using the chairs made it so exciting. I mean, they were like flying across the stage and it improved and changed the art. So I think right. um, for me, when I'm looking at all these sort of like 
pushes towards inclusion and whatever that is like I, I don't like it when it just seems to be that sort of like, oh, look at us, hooray, we're virtue signaling that we're, you know, including these often ignored people. For me, it's always like, is it actually um, improving the art kind of thing? Uh, yeah, and it's the agency, right? Because yeah. improving the arts of agency, I mean, a person, let's say, with one leg can have the same rigor as somebody else, right? It's, so it's about like investigation and rigor and making good art, no matter what your ability is, mm -hmm. and then really still have that kind of um, kind of standard. And what you just described is again, able-bodied people is not doing something about, right? Yeah. And and then you know, not everybody is also that aware or the person in the wheelchair might feel uncomfortable or not because maybe they're just used to that kind of treatment, right? They say the self, the self thing. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 I feel like um, I get told so often if I'm, if I tell a dance teacher or a choreographer, like, oh, you know, I have a disability. They always just do the, we'll do what you can line. And I, I always hate that so much. It's like I can do a lot of really amazing things, just maybe not the same as everybody else in this class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've had that with, with, um, you know, um, so I have a daughter and she dances too, and she has scoliosis. So, um, so one of her hips is not even, mm -hmm. so. She's a beautiful dancer and just dances everything. But it, it's also like, well, straighten your back or do and like put your hip in. Can't do it. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, and as a mother, I had to send her x-rays at one point to a thing because I'm like, she's <gasps> so frustrated telling you this and you keep on correcting her to, on something that there's no way she can correct. Yeah. yeah just here's her x-ray. Yeah. Look at it. I know she looks pretty great. <laughs> But this is her spine. Right. This is her hip. She's not in pain. She's fine. Minus the thing you keep on correcting her on, as if mm -hmm. she deliberately is not doing it. Is just really for she was young, you know. Like it's like for a twelve-year-old, not good. Yeah. In ballet. Right. Of, of course. I was gonna say it's definitely a ballet teacher. <laughs> yeah, ballet teacher, ballet yeah. class, ballet class in her little mm -hmm. tight. You know? Yeah. And you know, with, with your skinny little body naturally. Um, and that's, so there is also a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of, but that's also has to do with not giving agency to the people themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the training is not saying, Oh, do what you can, which meaning that you can't of like, even, even I'm changing it a lot. I also teach yoga is when I say, okay, I'm giving you a few options. Not one is better than the other. Yep. Because physically, actually, not everybody is going to be able to do things on their hands because of the way their wrists are done. Mm -hmm. Because some people like this, they can't never fully do it without injuring themselves. Yeah. Right. And so there is, for some people, there are just the bone structure is this. Right. So they can force themselves like crazy or even like with the hips because it's the way the femur is in the hip socket. They can't do it. Oh, I know. They're yeah. going to be that flexible because it's not how they're built. So you're going to set them up feeling like failures and they don't pre they don't train hard enough to reach this certain goal. Mm -hmm. So it's just also like teaching people to like, you know, your body, this is what you can. Yes, you can be in that range, but what is your range? So that there's our options and not one is better than the other. And then of mm -hmm. course, if you do something like ballet, they mostly select people based on their turnout and their feet. Oh yeah. You know, like, so it's an aesthetic that you get walk into. Anyway, we can go on. <laughs> I have well, to say I'm that I'm looking forward to seeing the festival. And thank you again so much. This was just like amazing talking to you. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for your interest. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much. All okay. right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.